combat fighter. I always knew I was a little bit bigger than everyone, but I've always been a really, you know, nice person and people tell me the longer you're around me, but the smaller I seem. Growing up, I got into football in the third grade and that was really, I think, a turning point in my life where I, uh, you know, kind of found my identity and like learned to be more confident in myself. Following that path, you know, I played high school football and was able to make the All-State team and got recruited to Dartmouth to play. In high school, uh, alongside playing football, I started playing uh, foam sword fighting, basically. And that kind of, you know, developed my interest in medieval combat. Growing up, my mom was raising me and my sister and at times, um, she put me in dangerous situations, not knowing, you know, basically like made me a victim of violence from someone. The trauma that happened to me kind of put me in a shell for a while through football and sword fighting. I've been able to kind of crawl back out and, you know, be more confident. Normally, I'm a pretty nice guy, uh, but in high school, my coach had to actually teach me how to psych myself up and tap into that aggression to be as effective as I could be. My aggressiveness is a, a big tool that I've been able to use, so it definitely translates into the, the armored combat. While playing football in college, I saw videos online of people, you know, fighting for the U.S. team overseas, like uh, classic rock like, you know, playing along to it. And just from the moment I saw it, like, just something clicked in my mind and it was just like, I'm gonna, gonna work on doing this someday, you know? So Armored Combat League is a worldwide league, actually, and we qualify throughout the year at certain events um, to make the national team. So with our best fighters in the Armored Combat League, we make USA Knights, and then we go compete in an international world championship. It's a traveling tournament that lands at a different castle site in Europe each year. I kind of got thrusted into it, like right into the, like the hottest fire you can put yourself in. Uh, went to one tournament and tried out and then made one of the top teams and was going to Portugal like two months later and fighting international teams. I was voted uh, the rookie of the year. So that was a really big honor. And uh, also just, you know, made me feel like I'm on the right path and we ended up starting our own team based out of Tulsa to start competing against other cities all around the nation. We're called the Tulsa Tyrants. Uh, our mascot is a, a fighting rooster. Uh, we were gonna be Tyrannosaurus Rexes, but that was not medieval enough, apparently. Come rally up around me. All right, so they're sending Simon out first. If you get matched up with Simon, don't get within arm's reach. Don't fully engage. I need you to cat and mouse him. Okay. Heath, you can do it. Bradley, you can sure do it. I can do it. I think you could do it too. You stay away. <laughs> All right, let's go. In the melees, you are in the fight as long as you're standing. Uh, your two feet are always considered one and two points of contact. And then if any other third point, like my hand or my weapon, uh, comes in contact with the ground, or if I just fall down, then I'm out of the match. I have to sit there until there's one man standing or, you know, the other team is wiped out. Before a battle, I try to, you know, listen to music that's gonna focus my mind. And really, it's just kind of like, psyching myself up into a you know, violent state, 
you can't be smiling and laughing because you, you have to go punch a guy as hard as you can. The adrenaline really creates a whole different mood too. Uh, like a lot of the hits you take, you can't even really feel them. And you'll come out of the, the list and five minutes later, 10 minutes later, like it'll wear off and you'll feel like maybe you got hit somewhere you didn't even like think about it or perceive. Stamina is a huge part of the sport and working out and getting into shape is a must. So you're in, you know, 60 to 80 pounds of armor usually. It gets really sweaty because you're wearing essentially quilted clothing underneath all the metal. A lot of times people get uh, cuts on their faces from their helmet getting, you know, punched into it. But for the most part, uh, you know, you come out pretty whole if your armor is working well and doesn't get broken. I kind of think about fighting as like a therapeutic activity for me. You know, tapping into those negative emotions and like exerting yourself and sweating and getting to uh, throw some punches around. Also just uh, measuring myself against other, other people has always been a great thing in my life. It's been a good reason to, you know, get me off the couch and motivated me to be a better me, you know? The thing about being a knight in the Armored Combat League is that you're not better than anyone. It means being in service, you know, to the people around you, to your community, the whole chivalrous idea. The way it translates into my life, I think, is I always try to be available to protect people who would, you know, need it. My day jobs has been uh, working in the government relations department at Cherokee Nation. Uh, a lot of times we're traveling around doing outreach. Uh, you know, other kids are experiencing violence and poverty. All things that I struggled with as a kid, you know, it's been rewarding getting to, you know, work alongside other tribal citizens uh, to make an impact on those issues. When I was a kid growing up, oftentimes, you know, I felt in harm's way. And uh, that kind of uh, made me want to be there for, you know, people who are helpless. I think that's part of, you know, kind of the idealism of chivalry and uh, having a goal of being a good person and, you know, holding yourself to uh, a high standard.